What is going on guys? Welcome back to another Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl Wi-Fi battle. Today I have a really fun match using a brand new team that I threw together. Uh, it's a hyper offensive team mostly uh, with some pretty familiar faces. I'm excited to see if these guys can work. Before we get into the video, I found out that 48% of the people who watch my videos are not subscribed. So if you could, please consider hitting that subscribe button. It only takes you a second. It's free and you can always, you can always unsubscribe. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and decide to lead off with Nudes the Shuckle. Got to make sure you send them nudes. And um, I'm expecting them to likely lead off with Donphan. Does have rapid spin support, um, but I'm going to kind of make them play around Sticky Webs uh, and Stealth Rock and stuff. They actually end up leading off with the Roserade, and that's something I definitely wasn't really expecting them to lead with. But the good news is, if anybody has to get a Sleep Powder, it's probably going to be designated to nudes on my team anyway. Uh, so I decided to stay in here. I'm just going to click Sticky Web just in case they miss. Uh, but they do land the Sleep Powder here, and nudes go in and go ahead and take a nice little nap. Um, so, if they're ended up leading off with a Roserade, that likely tells me that this thing is probably a designated lead, meaning they are going to go ahead and set up some hazards with the spikes, toxic spikes potentially. Um, likely probably not going to go for toxic spikes because I do have the poison type on my team to be able to switch that thing in and soak them up. But I realize he's definitely going to go ahead and get up some hazards here, so it's a good time for me to bring in the spiciest sausage boy, uh, the Typhlosion. I can bring this thing in before it gets the hazards up so I don't have to worry about taking that damage. Plus, I can either scare this thing out with an eruption, or just do a buttload of damage. If they stay in, it's definitely going to be Focus Sash here. I am expecting that. I just go for the eruption, being Choice Carp, obviously I outspeed. And that does, in fact, knock it down to its Sash. So this Roserade has kind of done what it's supposed to do here as a lead. Uh, it takes a hit, it's got something to sleep, it's got a Valera Spikes. And it even hits me with a huge Sludge Bomb. Krakatoa says, That shit hurting! So now, of course, eruption being damaged based off of how much HP I have. Um, it's not going to do much to whatever they decide to switch into. I assume they're going to conserve that Roserade just because uh, I don't have any hazards up and it can still put something to sleep later. So I'm going to expect to switch here. I'm thinking they're probably going to go into either um, the Rotom Wash or the Clefable. Either way, I'm going to go ahead and expect the switch going to uh, Jinx here. The, the OG Frostitute coming back at him. <laughs> I mean, it's, always, it's always a fun time uh, to use Jinx. This thing is a, is a Pokemon that I've literally used since like the beginning of... Starting to Wi-Fi battle, and it's always been it's always been a good time. Anyway, they do end up actually going into the Don Fan, uh, which is actually fine. Either way, something is getting smooched. Whether you like it or not, Jinx is gonna smooch you. Uh, they do actually end up switching Don Fan out because they don't want to take an Ice Beam or something, but they end up going into Clefable, who is a nice little big old round target for a big old kiss right on the right on the mouth. Uh, so that is going to put this thing to sleep. It's always great when you can get Jinx to actually land lovely kisses. It's like just do, just do your job, lady, and thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, anyway, now that we have a sleeping Clefable, I don't know if they're going to end up switching out again. I assume they're going to stay in here. Uh, Jinx actually can't really touch this thing. Unless I was a Nasty Plot set, I could potentially set up. Uh, unfortunately, I am not at the moment, but I'm going to end up switching into Tits McGee, another OG. This is a, a Pokemon that <laughs> I've used in videos like literally 10 years ago, which is kind of wild. But they stay asleep, they stay in with the Clefable, and now I'm thinking this looks like a great time to have a nice little dance here. Um, Venomoth is over here just staring into my soul. It looks like he's just looking back at me as he's dancing. He's like, you like that shit? You like that? And I do like that, because it gives me that, uh, that nice boost there with the ability to now potentially get a Venomoth sweep going. So, I'm thinking, I really don't know if I should dance again. I, I don't want to get greedy, uh, but Clefable seems to be staying in, and potentially, if it wakes up, the worst case scenario is it probably goes for um, a Thunder Wave, which, which will really kind of hinder... My, my little setup action here. But I decided to dance again. I'm like, you know what? When in Rome, when, when you got a sleeping Clefable over there, you give them a show that they can't even see. So they actually end up staying asleep. I've been getting really lucky on my sleep turns lately, which, to be, to be honest, the teams that I bring definitely need the <laughs> support from Sleep Powder. I need Pokemon to stay, you know, dormant as long as possible. Anyway, they're actually going to end up switching into the Roserade here. I just go for the damage. Uh, go for the Sludge Bomb that takes care of the Roserade. I assume they went into this thing just for Death Fodder to be able to, to uh, bring in a better threat right after that. And uh, Life Orb Venomoth absolutely steals people's lives. You literally... It's, it's, there's not much you can do. Anyway, Skuntank comes in. Uh, worst case scenario, they go for a Sucker Punch here. I'm just going to go right for the Bug Buzz. They actually do not Sucker Punch. Uh, and a Bug Buzz definitely kills that thing after two Quiver Dancers. There's no scenario where that thing lives. Especially being Life Orb. And Tits McGee's just having himself a day over here, just flapping around. He's like, this shit's fun, bro. I'm, in, I'm enjoying this. Thanks for bringing me out of the Pokeball after literally 10 years. 
Uh, they end up going back into Clefable, which is an interesting call to me, because sleeping Clefable, especially since they know I have Sludge Bomb, uh, that is definitely going to take care of you, pink chewed piece of pink gum. And uh, this is nice. We're actually able to break a, a decent hole into this guy's team, and I'm feeling good about it. But now they go into Donphan. And here's where it gets a little interesting. I expected this thing to be sturdy, and I really kind of expected them to bring this thing in earlier. I go for the Bug Buzz here. Uh, that does kill, but it knocks it down to sturdy. And they could have definitely brought this thing in earlier. Maybe they forgot that I didn't have entry hazards up or something like that. They didn't know the sturdy was still active. Either way, now they're going to go ahead and roar. And basically just yells at Venomoth. Venomoth does not like being confronted. And I just get the hell out of there. The good news is it actually brings in another massive legend. The Meatloaf. Over here with his little, little baby wings flapping, trying their best. Um, Dunsparce is a fun Pokemon that I'm actually determined to get to, uh, to, get to work definitely. He'll, he'll be in some upcoming battles, so... You know, make sure you subscribe for that. Anyway, uh, I go for the coil here. They actually are going to end up setting up the Stealth Rock, which is kind of bad for me. Now they have a layer of spikes and the Stealth Rock. I don't have any Rapid Spin or Defog on this team, uh, which, you know, is unfortunate. But I go for the coil there, and I don't I, I don't understand how this guy coils. He seems pretty short to be able to coil. But we, we don't question the Pokemon logic here. Uh, I get that plus one attack, plus one defense in accuracy here. Uh, so now I'm just going to go right for the, the Headbutt. There's no reason... Um, not to just go for some damage here. They go for the Earthquake. After the defense boost, I can definitely take two of those. And hell yeah, Meatloaf! Grabbing himself a kill here. And after Leftovers Recovery, it's looking like Dunsparce has pretty good odds to get something going against the remaining Pokemon that they've got. Um, so yeah. They're actually going to end up bringing in the Miss Maggie here. And this is an interesting matchup because this thing can't hit me with its hardest stab, obviously. Uh, no Shadow Ball against me. I'm going to go for a Glare, because if I can get this thing paralyzed, I can have a good time. But, he decided to bring out a Beanie Baby, and of course, you can't paralyze that little guy. So, that is actually unfortunate. I was really hoping that this thing wasn't going to be sub-nasty plot, and I've, uh, I've been bamboozled here. But, I know that this thing will need some decent boost to be able to kill me with whatever uh, coverage moves this thing has. It just kind of depends on what this thing's working with. But, I do have Rock Slide on this thing. Um, and plus, I actually do have the accuracy boost from the, <laughs> from the coil, so that's actually kind of nice. Miss Maggie is going to be thinking some nasty thoughts over there with her pointy hat, just looking menacing. Absolutely fucking scary. Um, Miss Maggie is, is, is definitely one of the scarier Pokemon. When they, when they can set up nasty plots, uh, they're definitely, they can, they can get some sweeps going. So I'm really trying to avoid that from happening. And um, I do break the substitute there with a rock slide. So we're at a little bit of a stalemate here where I don't know if they're going to want to end up going for a substitute again just in case I glare. I really, everything in me wants to click glare. Um, but it's probably not going to be a good decision. So I'm just going to stay and go for a rock slide. They do actually end up going for a substitute again. And this is actually fine by me because this thing is slowly starting to whittle itself down. Uh, if I can get it around half, even after this Dunsparce matchup, I can be uh, in decent shape. So I do obviously land a critical hit against the, the freaking the substitute. To be honest, if you kill a substitute enough times, I feel like there should be a mechanic where they don't allow you to set up any more substitute. How are you making these beanbags? Like, for real though. Uh, anyway, I'm over here just eat, just having a feast, to be honest. I'm, I'm recovering quite a bit of HP with these leftovers. And now I'm thinking, even at plus two, I can probably take two attacks here. So I might come out on top here. So, they end up going for the Mystical Fire. And that knocks me uh, in killable range for the next hit. But this does allow me to get a free Rock Slide on. You don't got no beanbag with you today, boy. And unfortunately, it does actually live that. So that is kind of a bummer. I did need uh, at least another coil to make that happen. Um... Dunsparce, you know, he, he does his best, all right? Look at his little wings over here. Don't judge my guy, all right? It's actually a girl, but anyway. Um, I'm thinking I could potentially switch into Typhlosion, but then I'm like, there's hazards up, and obviously, you know, I'm not uh, Flash Fire and stuff, but uh, they go for another Mystical Fire here that is going to take care of the Meatloaf, but you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm proud of you, little fella. This guy's definitely going to get an evolution in Legends Arceus, and if you say otherwise, you're, you're wrong. We, we, we got to will that shit into existence, because... Dunsparce needs the help, for real though. Anyway, now I've got an empty battlefield. I can go into whoever I want. Um, I'm trying to figure out what kind of speed tiers I'm working with here. Jinx is not going to be able to outspeed, unfortunately. If they are timid, Miss Maggie, I'm just a little bit slower, and that is not great. Um, Typhlosion is the only Mon that could outspeed this thing, but then I'm like, oh shit, the Don fan got up Stealth Rocks, <laughs> and I'm just going to come in to be like, hey, how's it going over here? This looks like a fun time, and I'm dead. And yeah. Typhlosion, that was a definitely a misplay on my end. I could have saved that thing for some death fodder potentially later if needed, but, you know, you hate to see it. 
So, I have some options here. I can go into the slacking. Now, either I click Sucker Punch and expect this thing to attack me here. I am Choice Banded, um, which means I'll be locked into that. But I would be able to kill it. But I'm thinking that's probably not the safest play. I know what I could do is go for Rock Slide. It's actually the only move that can hit. Uh, their only other Pokemon is the Rotom Wash, which both of these two Pokemon are Levitate. So I'm forced to go for Rock Slide here. And I'm thinking, please Rock Slide. You've betrayed me in the past, but luckily it does actually land this time. That takes care of uh, the Ghosty, and now it's down to if I can take out this Rotom Wash. Now, we've got pretty low odds considering the hazards. I can't really go into, like, Venomoth. It, it's, looking, it, it's looking pretty bleak. Plus, Bread is, you know, loafing around over here like some type of lazy asshole. And they actually end up killing me with the Volt Switch. Uh, so the, the reason, they, they click Volt Switch, so I'm thinking maybe their Choice Scarf. Uh, which would be not ideal, but the only way I can win this is if I can bring in Jinx, if I can land a Lovely Kiss, and then kill it with two Psychics. That's literally the only way. Um, so I bring in the Frostitute, we get hurt by some Spikes, we get hurt by some some freaking Legos. We're just stepping on all sorts of shit out here. I go for the uh, I go for the Lovely Kiss here, it's the only thing I can do. I actually do outspeed so they're not Choice Scarf. I smooch you right in the old door, and we've got this thing to sleep. So plan A, Completed. Now all I have to do is uh, make some psychics happen. If they could stay asleep, that'd be great. Frostitute, I need you to do it for me here, buddy. There's no one else that can come in and help you. Uh, I just go ahead and click the psychic here. Nice little stab. Nice little stab psychic. Jinx actually does hit pretty hard, so I'm like, okay, let's see how this goes. Go for the psychic. I actually end up getting a critical hit, and that is going to knock out the Rotom Wash. So that is some pretty crazy luck. If I had not landed that critical hit either... They stayed asleep and I was able to kill it with another Psychic. If they ended up waking up and killing me with a Thunderbolt or Volt Switch, I would be forced to bring in the Shuckle and try and, try and stall some stuff out or make something happen. Regardless, Frostitute just had to do it to him one time, and that was <laughs> it was at least a, an entertaining match for sure. As always, thank you guys very much for watching. All of the support lately is, is great for me to see, and I really do appreciate every one of you. So hit that like button on the video if you enjoyed, and I will see you next time.